This video is presented to you by Physics for Students. To know more, please visit us at physicsforstudents.com. Dear friends, my name is Shonak and I am your host for this particular podcast, The Saint of Mathematics. Welcome to the fifth episode. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end, the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It's a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come. When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprisled love, the law's delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin, who would father else bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no travellers returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience thought makes cowards of us all and does the native hue of resolution is sicklied over with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. As the world was busy finding the answer to his proof, Perelman came to his country at St. Petersburg and silently resigned from mathematics. He remained silent as the world struggled to validate and find his proof. Perelman has walked a long way down. He has left mathematics. His world began to shrink. He stopped talking about mathematics. For him, mathematics is over. What could be the reason? Is he tired? Was that the spark of a genius mind? Or was it desperation? The team led by John Morgan and Gantian by that time has verified Perelman's proof and a lecture in the International Congress of Mathematicians that his work has been thoroughly checked. However, there was a controversy. Xing Tang Yao, an American mathematician, claimed that Perelman has done nothing new and has just extended the proof of Hamilton. Yao gives himself the main credit. The address reads Yulitsa Kupkina 8, Moscow, Russia. 117966 and the plaque reads Russian Academy of Sciences St. Petersburg Department of Steklov Mathematical Institute This is the place where Perelman worked and collaborated with numerous researchers. 
He resigned from the Steklov Institute in December 2005. After four years of intense study, verification, which involved the world's greatest brains and minds, the team finally came to a conclusion that the proof is correct. It was during this time that the International Mathematical Union announced the Fields Medal Award to Perelman, which is regarded as one of the highest honors a mathematician can receive and has been described as the Nobel Prize of Mathematics. To the utter surprise of the entire world, he declined the prize. Sir John Ball, President of the International Mathematical Union, went to Perelman in St. Petersburg in June 2006 to persuade him to accept the prize. After 10 hours of attempted persuasion over two days, he resigned. Perelman said, everybody understood that if the proof is correct, then no other recognition is needed. I'm not interested in money or fame. I don't want to be on display like an animal in a zoo. I'm not a hero of mathematics. I'm not even that successful. That is why I don't want to have everybody looking at me. Four years later, on March 18, 2010, Perelman was awarded a Millennium Prize for solving the problem with award money of one million dollar. On June 8, 2010, he did not attend a ceremony in his honor to accept his one million prize. Perelman refused to accept the Millennium Prize in July 2010. A man who was considered to be one of the greatest genius living on earth, a man who received the highest award in the field of mathematics, Fields Medal and Millennium Prize declined both. The prize money for the Fields Medal is 15,000 Canadian dollars and that of the Millennium Prize is 1 million US dollars. How rich a person can become? It seems that for Perelman, his meaning of life revolves around doing what he loves and also helping others at the same time. He's still the only man of science to refuse prizes for his work and I think that teaches us the best lesson possible. In life, we should not pursue things because they bring fame or wealth. We should pursue them because it is what we love doing. Money never meant anything to Perelman as with or without a million dollars, he would live his life in the exact same way. Can we really provide value to Perelman's talent? No, we cannot. So he is beyond measurement. Why do people spend their entire life pursuing their passion? For fame, for money, for prominence, for Perelman it is not. Why he declined the prices? Well, the answer my friend is blowing in the wind. Perelman stands resolute in his decision. Thousands of reporters gather around his house, waiting to talk to him. Many wait for days and nights to have a glimpse by the window. Some try to take photographs of him as he walks down the alleys. I myself have seen a few footage on YouTube where he was seen shopping in malls, buying bread and milk. Often a passerby would greet him and he would do so with a smiling face. He never came in touch with any woman. Neither he has any close fellow mate. He avoids boarding an elevator if there are many people and prefers to take the stairs down from his apartment. He's an ethical person, more ethical than anyone else. 
mathematicians are more ethical as they have a strong sense of what is right and wrong as mathematics always finds the right way out perlman considered it not right to receive the award money he considered richard hamilton to get a share of that as he was the person who showed him the light which shone on the stage he answered to the world i have nothing to say he believed in nobility he believed in his work not in the fruits he believed that the result of the work is important rest are all fruitless it might be a million dollar or a fistful of the coin perelman's refusal his seclusion circumventing from society teaches us that people do science and mathematics not for money they do it because they love it it's because they live with it because they breathe the air in it there are no such instances in the history of science where work is done in such a pure manner the virtuosity in pursuing a passion is well defined in perelman's journey devoid of earthly pleasure money fame and establishment he pursued mathematics just for the sake of doing the work the work became more important rather than anything else what could you call this person the saint of mathematics deliverance is not for me in renunciation i feel the embrace of freedom in a thousand bonds of delight thou ever pourest for me the fresh draught of thy wine of various colors and fragrance filling this earthen vessel to the brim my world will light its hundred different lamps with thy flame and place them before the altar of thy temple no i will never shut the doors of my senses the delights of sight and hearing and touch will bear thy delight yes all my illusions will burn into illumination of joy and all my desires ripen into fruits of love dear friends making this podcast on gregory perelman was not just an ordinary job ever since i read about perelman he haunted me day and night his personality his prodigious talent and above all his impeccable honesty and renunciation made him to be my personal hero in the history of mankind perhaps there would never be such a person who in spite of being the most famous person remained aloof from everything the vedas and the upanishads spells out such a person to be a karma yogi ever since my days with the ramakrishna mission institute the order always taught us to give up the fruits of the work and just do your best we cannot the sages and the monks are heard to do renunciation and stay attached with the worldly pleasures but remain unattached for me perelman is the greatest example my deep love affection and respect keeps on soaring until i get submerged in his soul i consulted books websites and watched the russian documentary on perelman I also saw few of his footage in YouTube and wrote the script. I always enjoyed this project, especially making the script. I am thankful to my friends Clement, Tania Wirt, Tania Ivashenko for helping me to read the Russian texts. Lastly, I am thankful to my student, 
Debolina for making the first three podcasts with her wonderful voice and to Ashna Ahir, who have always been by my side as she helped me completing the final episodes. Through this podcast, I am happy that I could at least pay my tribute for such a noble soul. Wherever he is, whatever he is doing, let the good Lord keep him at his best. I really don't wish that he comes back to mathematics. I wish he stays happy and healthy. If you are listening to me, Dr. Perelman, I could only say, I, I miss you.